Howdy, folks. This is Scott. Uh, look what I've got for you guys today. Yeah, that's right. Welcome, folks. This is Scott with the Game Audio Institute, and we are continuing our scripting short series. This one won't be really too much based on scripting, per se, but it is going to be based on audio, and we will be talking about audio reverb zones. Now, audio reverb zones have actually been around pretty much as long as the audio system in Unity. They were already there at the very beginning, that I, at least as far as my experience with them has been. Uh, and in fact, they exactly do what they're supposed to do, what it says on the tin, essentially. They are a zone of audio reverb. So let's go take a look and see what how they work, basically, okay? All right. So, uh, an audio reverb zone is kind of shaped quite similar to what a, a audio um, source is. If you take a look over here, you can see that there's these two concentric circles here, and they represent the minimum and the maximum distance of the reverb zone. Now, a reverb zone is exactly a exactly that. It's a zone of reverb. It acts pretty much independently in the sense of what it does is it feeds reverb into every audio source that is playing audio within the actual physical space of the game, okay? So whatever's there inside the game, you know, there's exceptions and stuff. We'll, we'll get into that. But generally, if you put an audio source there and you put an audio reverb zone within the area of the audio source, it will start to have reverb characteristics of that particular audio reverb zone. And it's a little bit tricky because the fact that it's more difficult to say, you know, affect the reverb itself or just have a signal being fed into the mixer so you can adjust the reverb. You really can't do that too easily, unfortunately. Uh, you can, there are some, there are some, some things that you can do. It's not a lot, there's not a lot, but basically this is a more primitive, um, a primitive uh, version of having reverb in your game, essentially. It works really, really well in situations in which you are outdoors, you know? So basically, uh, and the way that it basically works is that there are essentially two controls that really basically are things that you have the most control over. You can control the reverb and you can actually set the reverb settings so that they're completely manual if you want them to be. Um, but you know, as far as the actual configuration is concerned, there's really only two controls, and they're, again, similar to the to the audio source. So the idea is that you have a minimum distance and a maximum distance, and what this does is it basically feeds a certain amount of the signal, and that feed, feeding into the reverb effect basically increases as you get closer to the maximum distance. At, after the maximum distance, it no longer increases. So it doesn't get any more feeding into the reverb effect. That'll be the maximum reverb effect you can possibly have. Whereas the minimum distance is the minimum effect of reverb. Anything below that pretty much means that you're not gonna be in reverb at that point, right? So, you know, to just sort of, uh, to put one in the game very easily, you just go to the game object menu, you choose 3D object, oh, sorry, you choose audio, and then you choose audio reverb zone. And then you can push it around, do whatever you need to do with it. Um, so that's can, that can be helpful. It's not a bad idea if you want to add like maybe a, a mesh to it so that you could do, you know, because the audio reverb zone is in fact a component. So you could put, you could put, you know, create like a, a sphere or something like that. And that might be helpful in terms of just visually th seeing things because what happens is that when you are in Unity and, you know, looking at objects, the, the physical placement of them relative to things in terms of perspective can sometimes be off. And so sometimes you might not actually be able to see things correctly when they're just these, you know, invisible sort of, uh, you know, um, globes that are just sort of suspended in space. It's very easy to accidentally sort of push them away. But, you know, of course you can test them inside the game and find out what, what's going to happen. But, uh, you know, it might not be a bad idea to start it from the idea of, like, say, having a sphere of some kind and then placing an audio uh, reverb zone in the in the space of the sphere so you can have a, a physical kind of outlook. So we can kind of do that. That's pretty easy as well. In that case, all you'd have to do would be, say, delete the audio reverb zone instead. Uh, go to your game object menu, choose, let's say, 3D object. I'm going to say sphere. There's my sphere. Um, and I can bring it around wherever I need to bring it around. Oh, by the way, this, this stuff is really annoying. This is the, uh, this is the, um, 
light probe stuff for the materials. It's very annoying. So it says light probes say off. And when you do that, that actually goes away. Because I always find that shape really, really weird to deal with. But, you know, so you have this. You can create a material if you wanted to that could be uh, more translucent um, or not. It, it, it's all up, to, all up to you. But now what you can do is you can go here to the Add Component menu, look for Audio, or you can type the word Reverb, R-E-V. How about that? Audio Reverb Filter and Audio Reverb Zone. Audio Reverb Zone is what you're looking for. So the Audio Reverb Zone is this is you know basically is added now to this object so this becomes the center of the audio reverb zone and you can change its uh, size that's not going to really affect the actual the reverb zone size or anything like that but you can you know use it around but it's not a bad idea that way you have like an actual object that you're kind of moving the zone around it and it kind of be you know that can kind of be helpful essentially um so let's see so now we have Yep, a big old sphere. You can kind of barely see it, but that's there. It's there. And uh, so, we'd like, as I said we before, we have the minimum distance. We have the maximum distance. Minimum distance is, by default, 10 meters. Maximum distance at 15 meters. You can, of course, create however much you want uh, for that kind of stuff. Interestingly enough, the maximum distance is... Uh, yeah, so that's going to be... The maximum distance, actually, uh, is, is essentially the the quietest that the sound will be so you'll be at 15 meters that's the maximum distance there and then the minimum distance it's not going to get any louder after the minimum distance you know so you can basically you know try this out inside the game situation and see how it will work for you um so let me see if i've got anything going on i think that's going to be reasonably good um and i can make this one trigger so that i can at least run through the sphere otherwise it'll be a physical solid object but basically what happens is if i have my character and they start walking around they get into the area of the zone and now we are at maximum distance basically because we're right next to the thing but as you can see it ramps itself down as you as you walk through it essentially so that's the basically the idea now what happens is you can tell individual audio sources that are running through this or that are, you know, either dynamically or statically or whatever, for whatever reason you want, to not react to them, essentially. So what you can do is if you say, for example, our footsteps that we have with our player, uh, it's going to have this uh, audio source. And the audio source is going to have this option to say bypass reverb zones. Which means that basically it will cancel any effect that a reverb zone has on that audio source when you walk through. So watch that. So if I click that and we start playing the game. Right, here we go. And now it's basically back to being completely dry, no effect whatsoever. But if we take off the bypass reverb zones, and you can do this dynamically if you needed to, then you have, oops, sorry, we go again. and they turn back on again, basically. Uh, so you can, you can basically do that. So that's pretty cool. There is also a reverb zone mix, which means that different objects that are running through the area of the reverb zone can have different mixes applied to them. Um, so that's, you know, certainly possible to do. So, so basically you can create a less obvious, you know, kind of sound if you want to have that, or you can make it even more. Interestingly enough, the reverb zone is one of the only ones that actually goes over one point for some reason, one, one, one volume, uh, you know, the 1.0 volume, which is different than the typical volume, which, you know, goes all the way to one basically. Um, so that's the interesting, that's an interesting sort of situation. Um, Notice also that even though we have this on Spatial Blend 2.2D, which is technically not 3D, not a 3D object at all, it also will run through the reverb zone. So, so the reverb zone will work on either 2D or 3D sources. It does not actually care what the spatialization settings are, essentially. So that's an important kind of uh, distinction, essentially. Um, yes. 
So that's basically going to be the, the, the situation there. Uh, let's see if we can show you what the uh, reverb zone mix is basically going to be doing. Uh, so I'll, I'll bring it down a little bit. And you can hear, you'll hear it being more subtle, obviously, at this point to do that. And we can kind of run this through. Okay. Sorry. It's there. Oh, no, no, we put bypass reverb zones. So here we go. If we're, if we're right in the center of the reverb zone right now. Oh, sorry. Once again. So that's not as extreme, basically, right? So it's a more subtle kind of effect. All right, so that is a little bit about that. Now, uh, the reverb zone itself, which we had on our sphere, right? There it is. Um, and you can rename this if you want to, you know, call it a reverb zone. This just helps a little bit uh, there. So you have a bunch of different reverb settings uh and we could run through all of them but they would take too far far too long basically um and the thing is is that so you can get things like stone rooms concert halls carpeted hallways all kinds of stuff like that but there is the last setting over here which is called user and when you have user you can now basically uh set this all up manually and you will probably recognize a lot of this stuff from reverb plugins it's fairly you know uh, familiar as far as the, the stuff concerned. The room control, the high frequency response, the low frequency response, a decay time, high frequency ratio, the number of reflections, reflections delay, the reverb amount, the reverb delay, the high, high frequency reference, the low frequency reference, I guess that's probably basically the frequency cutoff for these uh, room high frequencies and low frequencies, yep. Um, you have the diffusion and you have density. Um, sometimes those are both the same similar controls or whatever, but you can, you can play around with these, of course, and just try different things out, see what works at that point. I'm not sure, but I don't, I'm not 100% sure about that this can actually save presets. Um, let me see, save current to, um, let's see, test. So I'll say save current to audio reverb zone, and then it's trying to save this inside the project. Let's just see if we do that. Audio reverb zone, I'll say test reverb. And this might just be a little generic and not actually pertain to the thing, but let me just see what happens. So I'm gonna mess around with these controls and see if you can kind of set up your uh, multiple user presets, because at one time, in earlier versions of Unity, you couldn't do that. You could you could set the user va values, but they would be basically manual and independent per 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 uh, reverb zone. So let me see what we can do here. So if I say test reverb, yep, that recalls that very nicely. So yeah, you can actually set that up and uh, and save yourself some presets in addition to the existing presets that are all here. Or you can you know adapt from a preset and say you know an adapted version. It saves it as an asset at that point. So, and then you can just basically recall it using this button right here to the right of the question mark and to the left of the three dots, essentially, okay? So, now, um, before we go on, I'm going to say that this is in a great situation for outdoor types of, you know, reverb situations. But there's a problem, and we will talk about that next week, but I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. What shape are rooms? Are rooms spherically shaped? No, they're not. That makes reverb zones a little bit of a problematic situation when you deal with rooms. But we'll see you in the next episode for that. Okay, I hope that this is going to whet your appetite for the next one that we're going to come up because we're going to talk about how to use reverb in situations inside the game Rather, you know, inside rooms and stuff like that, hallways, rooms, things like that. Uh, and we'll sort of, you know, point out the issues that we have with reverb zones that are spherically shaped. Uh, they don't really work well with square rooms, comparatively speaking. You're going to have to get around that in some way. And we'll show you how we get around that in the next video. So if you like this one, 
please comment, please like, share, subscribe. If you uh, like uh, some of the stuff that we're doing, uh, you can uh, sign up for our Patreon. We give you all kinds of cool things and give you uh, some discounts on all of our um, wonderful game lessons that we have going on. At any rate, I hope this helps you keep your game audio on, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.